Hello there, I'm Larry, the Library Gnome, and this is Storytime Online. Guess what? Next week, the Alamosa Public Library is celebrating Gnome Coming and we've got a whole week filled with fun activities and dress-up themes for you to take part in. Monday is Tail Day. Ever wonder what it's like to have a tail? Make any kind of tail you want and attach it to your outfit, then wear it all day. Mine's a foxtail that I made out of some felt. I like that the orange on the tail matches my orange shirt. Once your tail's in place, be sure to drop by the library between four and six for a mini pizza-making party, where you can make your very own gnome-sized pizzas. Tuesday is Mushroom Day, and we gnomes love our mushrooms. So, either dress up like a mushroom, put on some mushroom jewellery, or wear something mushroom-related. And come on over to the library for story time with Ms. Holly at ten o'clock. I plan to wear my favourite mushroom scarf that my mom knitted for me. Wednesday is Autumn Colours Day. Do you have any clothes that are brown, red, yellow or orange? Wear all of them on this day. Then drop by the library between four and six for our prep rally where you can create your own gnome hats and gnome floats for Friday's Gnome Coming Parade. Thursday is Garden Party Day, and we encourage all of you to dress up like a flower, plant, fruit, or vegetable. I'm still deciding on whether I want to dress up as a sunflower or a carrot on that day. Wouldn't it be funny if I did both? Ha ha ha! Friday is dress like a gnome day, so break out your pointy hats and celebrate gnome coming at the library at 1.30. Show off the gnome floats you made by walking in the parade with us through the park. We'll also have lots of gnome snacks, gnome games and gnome activities for everyone. Saturday is glitter day. So wear something sparkly and join Ms. Holly in the story room for a very special Saturday story time at 10 o'clock. In anticipation for Gnome Coming, I want to share with you one of my favourite gnome stories. It's called The Three Little Gnomes by Johnny Gruel. Long, long ago, the tree had stood strong and upright, and its top branches reached far above any of the other trees in the forest. But the tree had grown so old, it began to shiver when the storms howled through the branches. And as each storm came, the old tree shook more and more, until finally, in one of the fiercest storms, it tumbled to the earth with a great crash. There it lay for centuries, and vines and bushes grew about in a tangled mass until it was almost hidden from view. Now down beneath the trunk of the fallen tree lived three little gnomes, and it was the smoke from their fire which curled up over the trunk of the old tree and floated away through the forest. They were preparing dinner and laughing and talking together when they heard the sound of a horn. What can it be? one asked. It sounds like the horn of a huntsman, another cried. As the sound came nearer, the three little gnomes stamped upon their fire and put it out so that no one would discover their home. Then they climbed upon the trunk of the tree and ran along it to where they could see across an open space in the forest without being seen themselves. And when the sound of the horn drew very close, they saw a little boy climb through the thick bushes. As the little boy came out into the open space, the three little gnomes saw that he was crying. He must be lost, 
said the first little gnome. He looks very tired and hungry, said the second little gnome. Let us go and ask him, said the third little gnome. So the three little gnomes scrambled down from the trunk of the fallen tree and went up to where the little boy had thrown himself upon the ground. They stood about him and watched him, for he had put his face in the crook of his arm and was crying. Finally, one of the little gnomes sat down in front of the little boy and spoke to him. I am lost, the little boy said. My father went hunting yesterday with all his men, and when they were out of sight, I took my little horn and followed them, but I soon lost their track, and I have wandered about with nothing to eat. Last night, I climbed into a tree and slept. The three little gnomes wiped the little boy's eyes and led him to their home under the fallen tree. There they finished preparing their dinner and sat about until the little boy had eaten and fallen asleep. Then the three little gnomes carried him into their house, way back in the trunk of the tree, and placed him upon one of their little beds. When the three little gnomes had finished their dinner, they lit their pipes and wondered how they might help the little boy find his way home. Let us go to old Wizzy Owl and see if he can suggest anything, said one. Yes, brothers, cried another, let us go to old Wizzy Owl. So the three little gnomes went to the home of Wizzy Owl and Wizzy Owl said he would fly high above the forest and try and see the little boy's home. I cannot see his home, cried Wizzy Owl. Maybe Fuzzy Fox can tell you. So the three little gnomes went to the home of Fuzzy Fox, and Fuzzy Fox said he would run through the forest and see if he could find the little boy's home. So Fuzzy Fox ran through the forest, but could not find the little boy's home. But, said Fuzzy Fox, I came upon a wounded deer who told me that a party of huntsmen had passed through the forest yesterday and had shot her with an arrow. So the three little gnomes went to see the wounded deer, and they washed the wound the arrow had made and bound it up for her. Then the three little gnomes sat upon Fuzzy Fox's back, and he ran on through the forest with them until they came to a wild boar. The wild boar had been crippled by the huntsman, he told the three little gnomes, but had managed to hid himself in the thick bushes and escape. It must have been the little boy's father and his men, said the wild boar. I am sorry that I am wounded, for I would like to help him. Then Fuzzy Fox ran with the three little gnomes through the forest, and they met a wounded bear and a wounded squirrel and five or six wounded bunny rabbits. And they all told the three little gnomes that the huntsman had shot them with arrows and that they just managed to escape. The three little gnomes felt very sorry for their wounded friends and helped them all they could by washing and bandaging them up. We are sorry that we cannot go with you and help find the little boy's home, they all said, for his mother will miss him and cry for him, and we know how much a mama or a daddy can miss a little boy or girl. So Fuzzy Fox ran until he came to the edge of the forest. And then the three little gnomes saw a large castle away in the distance with bright red roofs on the tall towers. That must be the little boy's home, said one little gnome. Let us return at once to our home under the fallen tree and ask the little boy, said another. So Fuzzy Fox ran with them back to their home and the little boy told them it was his home. Then the kind Fuzzy Fox took the three little gnomes and the little boy upon his back and ran to the edge of the forest, and on the way they stopped to see the wounded animals, and they were all glad that the little boy's mamma and daddy would soon see him. 
So Fuzzy Fox carried the three little gnomes and the little boy almost to the castle gate and shook hands with him. I will remember the way to your home, the boy told the three little gnomes, and I will be back to see you soon. The next day, when the three little gnomes were preparing dinner, they again heard the little boy's horn and ran along the trunk of the tree until he came to where they could see across the open space. Soon there came a great many people, and riding upon a fine horse in front of his daddy was the little boy. But this day he wore fine satin clothes, and they were not torn by brambles and bushes. Near him rode a beautiful lady. She was the little boy's mamma. So the three little gnomes went out to meet them, and the little boy slid from the horse and ran to them and threw his arms around them. This is my daddy, and this is my mama, he told them. The little boy's mama and the little boy's daddy dismounted and came to the three little gnomes and thanked them for returning the little boy to them. We will give you anything you wish for, said the little boy's mama and daddy. We wish for nothing, said the three little gnomes. We live happily here in the forest, and our wants are simple. But if you could send us some clean white cloths to bind up the wounds you gave our forest friends, we would be grateful. I told Daddy of the wounded creatures, said the little boy. Yes, his Daddy said and I have given orders that no one in my country shall hunt through this forest, and from now on your forest friends will be unharmed and can always live here in peace and happiness. For the great king was sorry that he and his men had ever caused any of the forest creatures any sorrow, and after that the creatures of the forest were never harmed and they grew up so tame they would wander right up to the castle, where the king's men would feed them. The tiny thread of smoke still curls up over the trunk of the fallen tree, and the voices of the little boy and his daddy mingle with the tiny voices of the three little gnomes as they prepare their dinner. For the great king and the little prince come often to visit their friends, the three little gnomes. Would you like to learn some interesting facts about gnomes? You would? Wonderful. Well, gnomes come from Rome. It's very true indeed. Since ancient times did people design tiny garden figurines. But it was in Germany in the 18th century where gnomes became something more. Thanks to fairy tales, myths and lore, gnomes' popularity soared and soared. Gnomes are vegetarian. We love mushrooms, nuts, and beans. Eating our veggies makes us very strong, stronger than any human being. We can live up to 400 years, and some of our young are born with beards. We love to volunteer and bring good cheer to everyone who comes near. Something you may know about me is that I like to write and talk in rhyme. But something you may not know about me is that I don't do it all the time. Have you ever tried making a word rhyme with another word? It's quite fun. Here, let's give it a try together. Tree. That's a good one. Tree has an E sound at the end. So to make a word rhyme with tree, you will need to find another word that also has an E sound at the end of it. Go ahead. Give it a try. Yep. Hmm. Good job. Words like B, C, and key all rhyme with tree. Ooh, berry. That's a good word. What words can you think of that rhyme with berry? Wow, those are some good rhyming words. What came to my mind when I saw the word berry is me, Larry. <laughs> Let's do one more. Book. Who doesn't love a good book, am I right? 
Let's think of some words that rhyme with book. Hmm. Hmm. Did you think of some? Me too. I thought of the word took, like, I took some books from the library. I sure had a lot of fun with you today, and I hope to see all of you next week for Gnome Coming. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Until next time. See you later, alligator. Out in a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, sweet baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Love goodbye, butterfly. Goodbye.